Hello Aces, welcome back to module 6, lesson 3.1, launching a campaign guys. This is a really, really interesting and juicy lesson. So make sure you guys take notes and pay attention because we're going to be talking about launching a campaign that will put you on the map as you either, either begin a new flavor or a new product. This is the lineups that I wanna help you get. And this is exactly the method for us to generate hype like this whenever we have a new product launch or when we have a new store. And that's why you need to have this kickstart launch campaign. You need to let people know that you exist. So when people are driving by, they see lineups like this. They're gonna talk about you. They're gonna know that there's a new kid around the block. You need to be able to test your operations because now when people are coming through the doors, you're gonna have a lot of volume. The last thing you want is to not have the volume, then you're not gonna be able to test your operations and you don't know what the kinks are. For us, when we had this lineup, we knew exactly where our weaknesses were and how we're exposed. And that has allowed us to go and actually fix those before we did our grand opening. Next up is also a great way to get feedback. So for everyone that came in, we always do surveys with them to see what they enjoyed, what they did not enjoy, and how we can improve. And next up, this can actually be used for your store launch. It could be used for new locations, new menu promotions, and much, much more. So understanding the principle allows you to use this many, many times to generate lineups like this. A successful kickstart launch campaign could mean massive exposure, guys. I'm sharing this with you because this is exactly what we were able to get. It's massive exposure, which led to us signing on two franchises within the first three months. And that's what I wanna be able to do for you guys. Uh, franchising, expansion opportunities, new customers will join your community because they love you guys so much. You are now on the map by doing something like this. Now, the components of a kickstart launch campaign is broken down into two phases. The first phase is set up. The second phase is execution. When we're talking about phase one, the setup phase, there are four parts to this. First is goal setting, second, timeline, third, offering, and fourth, design and photos. And this is specifically what we're diving into in this specific lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna be talking about execution. Um, so make sure that you guys hang tight. We're not gonna be talking about this specifically today, but just as a glimpse, we're gonna be talking about PR. We're gonna be talking about how you can work with influencers, how the operations should be set up, and what is the proper launch. And lastly, how do you analyze and improve for your next campaign? Now, let's dive right into the first phase, which is goal setting. You should have a clear idea of what your goals are from your master blueprint. And this is what we covered in module one, because you don't want to run a campaign that contradicts what you want to be able to achieve. A lot of people run campaigns and do promotions. And this is what I see a lot of times is that newcomer comes around the block. They do some crazy discount or crazy promotion. And you, on the other hand, feels that you have a need to follow suit. Otherwise, you're going to be left behind. And that's why you do the exact same thing without realizing why they are doing what they're doing. And that can oftentimes lead to a lot more harm than benefit, such as you losing money, such as your brand diluting his image, all this kind of stuff, right? Regardless of what your launch is, whether it's a new shop, new product, new campaign, doesn't really matter. You need to have a smart goal for your campaign because this allows you to know how you did at the end of each of the campaign that allows you to actually revise and turn it into a better campaign in the future. And as I was sharing with you, the principles that I'm sharing with you in running these campaigns should be universal across different campaigns that you're going to be running. You need to continuously run campaigns in order for you to stay relevant because there are so many new shops opening all the time. And if you don't run campaigns, you're going to become irrelevant and people are just going to forget about you. And that's the reason why learning the components and principles of this launch campaign is so, so crucial for your long term success. So some of the questions that you'd be asking is, what's the purpose of your launch campaign? How does it play out and how do you plan on carrying out the whole campaign? 
How do you plan on measuring the performance of your campaign? And when is your campaign expected to end? Now let's dive into some of the examples of how I've answered these questions so you understand how you can perhaps draft up your answers as well. So for our launch campaign for 720 Suites, uh, we had a 720 day and every year we do something big. We do something over the top so then that way we can get people to remember us. 720, that's our ice cream day. So to celebrate our fourth year anniversary, we wanted to do something with a bang, okay? How do we plan on carrying it out? How do we stay relevant and how can we create a talking point that people will talk about us? We decided that we need to collaborate with a major brand in order for us to gain that PR, gain the t people talking about us. Um, so then that way we can spread the news with PR, influencers, social media, email marketing, so on and so forth. And that's why we decided to go reach out to some of the major brands out there, Nespresso being one of them, and they agreed to work with us and collaborate with us. And that's a huge achievement because Nespresso is a worldwide brand that is willing to work with us, right? So how do we plan to measure the performance? Are we looking for money? Are we looking for profits? No, because we understand we're working with a big, big brand like this, all that we're looking for is brand awareness, right? The PR hits, the PR angle. And on top of that, how the community feels about us by doing this campaign. Those were the key metrics on what we use to measure our success. And of course, sales would see a lift as well, uh, but that is not our core, core measure of performance, okay? So when is this expected to complete? Lead time is two weeks and launch is on July 19th all the way up until July 28th. So now we set all the boundaries. Next up is for us to actually set the timeline. Once we understand the boundaries, we need to reverse engineer all the different milestones and the steps that we need in order for us to achieve the results we're looking for in this specific campaign. So some examples of milestones would be when is the press release completed and sent out to all the media? When is the photo shoot completed and final photos are completed? When is the influencer invites sent out? When are the staff training for the event? When are the supplies that we need for this campaign to be purchased? And these are just some of the questions that we're answering as we move backwards to see what we need in order for us to execute this specific campaign. For your campaign, it might be something very similar or it could be something very different. Nonetheless, having the parameters set out and then going backwards allows you to see all the different dates you need to set everything at and the different tasks. The more that you're able to list out and the more detailed you are, the easier it is for you to plan your execution well. So this also allows you to communicate with the rest of the team on what they need to do and how they're gonna be able to get to the vision that you have set for them. Now, I'll give you an example. Our idea of the campaign came on June the 17th. When we wanna launch this, because we know this is for our fourth year anniversary, it is on July the 20th, so we decided to run the campaign for uh, a week and a half, July 19th, all the way up until July the 28th these becomes our parameter of how we want to run our campaign. Next up, we understand we need a campaign photo shoot because we need to arrange it with our team and the production team. And we also need the designs and the photos all completed by July the 13th. Why is that the case? It is because we need to send out our press release on July the 15th to the 16th in order for our campaign to start running on the July the 19th. PR usually takes around two to three days to see whether they will accept your press release. And this is something that I cover in the later modules on how you can actually get PRs to write for you. Um, and then next up is now that we understand the major milestones in the, mid in the middle, we are working backwards even more. So June the 28th, we need to figure out all the campaign details, social media and emails, everything created on that notes. We need to send them tasting invites to the influencers on June 30th because they require a little bit more time to work those dates in their schedule. We need to know that we have the first teaser teasers for our campaigns posted to the public so then that way we can create that hype, right? Product needs to be created on July the 6th, 
by July the 6th because we are doing a collaboration with Nespresso. So we're doing a specific tiramisu flavor that goes along with Nespresso's brand. Shotless mood board created, and this is something that I've shared with you guys in the previous lesson on how you can create a month of content in just a day. So follow that, okay? Now, there are often times as you craft out your timeline and as you create these things, you're gonna see a lot more places where you can add in different tasks. And that's exactly what we're doing. Press release, we forgot about it. That's why we need to add it in on July the 14th. And on top of that, the campaign posters, menu, everything arriving at all our stores, including the training manual for our staff as well contest reveal email so as you can see we're just filling everything up so then that way this becomes a proper and very very specific timeline so we can follow it by the day and as you can see now that we have all the back end figured out let's figure out in the future what we're going to do the half point monitoring and also the cam campaign analysis this becomes a full-on timeline that we can follow and mind you within each of these tasks, within each of these milestones, there are the mini tasks that you need to do in order for you to actually have and complete that specific task. To give you an example, um, let's say campaign poster, menu arriving at store, staff training. That means we need to create a staff training guide. That means we need to have time to print our posters and to actually deliver it at the store. So these are the mini tasks that you need to account for. And if you were to put all the mini tasks on this timeline, then it becomes a very overwhelming project plan. And that's why I highly recommend just putting in stuff that truly matters as a specific milestone. Next up is offering. Now that we understand the timeline, we need to figure out our offering. The launch offer really depends on the goal that you set. So depending on what we're looking for. So if we're looking for massive awareness, and feedback, then we can have people, uh, uh, an example is that Bubble Tea Shop did a buy one, get one free, or the first 50 customers get their drink for free. And this creates a really big awareness for this brand because it's free bubble tea, people would love to go there just to get free stuff. But does this make us a lot of profits and money? Not necessarily, and that's the reason why all our launch offer really comes back down to the goal that we're trying to achieve. And within that goal, we come up with specific offers, specific strategies that uplift that goal. Now, if you're looking for profit and revenue, I would recommend something along the lines of offering a bundle or add-on or a limited edition. Those are the things that would generate higher profit margins for your shop. Your offer can also be a major selling point for press release and marketing, free stuff is always enticing. And as you can see from this part, uh, uh, image right here, um, one of our local publication picked up this offer because it was free stuff and they wanna share it with their following. And thus, this became a huge, hugely successful campaign for the Bobo Boys. After we figured out our offering, after we identified it, we now need to go and design and how to take our photo shoots, right? Make sure that they're on point and attractive because everyone, I'm, tell, I'm telling you, everyone eats with their eyes first. If it is not appealing, there's no way you can achieve the result that you're looking for to have people come through the doors all the time. There's no way you can achieve the viral factor. And that's the reason why you need to pay attention to your photos. And this is why I spent a whole lesson covering and sharing with you and basically teaching you all the secrets that we use in order for us to plan our photo shoot. So make sure if you haven't gone through our last lesson, go back to our last lesson and pay attention on how you can plan out all your photo shoots, okay? And this will be used across all your marketing channels, including your posters, menus, flyers, social media, and even for you to send it to your PR. PRs would not want to actually come in and take photos themselves because it is a lot of work. So the easier you make the process for your PR, the more likely that they will be featuring you. So that's a little tip for you there. And, then, and once again, I will be sharing all these tips with you a little bit more on how you can attract your PR in the next module. So what have you learned? In today's lesson, you have learned on how you can create your launch campaign that will put you on the map, phase one. Next up, we're gonna be talking about the execution fact 
of launching a specific campaign. So make sure you guys go there and start taking notes. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.